Hey, Warwick. Hey, Nicole, and g'day, Tradies and Business listeners. Oh, I'm so pumped for this episode. You're very enthusiastic today. <laughs> We're talking about something dear to my heart, Coxie. It gets oh. me all like sweaty and a little bit excited, actually. I think it gets lots of people hot under the collar. Oh, I think so. But not for all the right reasons. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, I think we have a joke, Nick. We've got a topical joke. We've done it again. I think this oh, like I haven't thought, podcast in a row. I haven't thought about how I'm going to segue, though. No, I, I don't know if you can. And I'm, maybe our guests oh. will be able to help us out with this because they're not shy of a joke themselves. I'll give it a shot. Hit me with the joke. I'll see if I can segue. I'm really still struggling which one to choose here. You and I laughed about so many of these off air. All right. I'm going to go with number two. Okay. Warwick. Nicole. What is the definition of a good tax accountant? No. Someone who has a loophole named after them. Boom dish. <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel so, like I want to do like a whole series now. I have so many more and we laughed more and more the further we got into this. We're going to have to invite lots more accountants to be on the podcast so we can yeah. see how they respond to the really... Sometimes quite nasty jokes. Give us another one, Coxie. Give us the, the plan B. Oh, no, hang on. There was a really good one earlier. Just wait, 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 wait. <laughs> and I'll think of a segue, which I'm struggling about loopholes, holes. No, I'm not going to go there. Okay, no, I've got one. Okay. Ready? What do you call an accountant who is seen talking to someone? No. Popular. <laughs> <laughs> I've got more. Oh dear! I don't know if I don't know if our guests can handle it. Actually, I think they can. I don't know. I They're having they a bit of a giggle along. Pro pretty probably. Quietly. Well, one of them's on mute because he's he's <laughs> taking the advice of his business partner. I'm guessing. I'm showing my lack of research here, fellas. Uh, welcome to the Traders in Business podcast, Dan and Tim. Thanks for having us. Good yeah. to be here. From yeah. now, I don't know where to say where you're from. You're either from Cats or Two Drunk Accountants. What's the deal? Oh, we, we're all and everything and nothing. Uh, we are the two drunk accountants and we're from Cats Accountants. <laughs> yeah, and we speak to lots of people. In one sentence. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, <laughs> accounting everywhere, just all yeah. over the place. <laughs> we're <it>. omnipresent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's going to be some big words in today's episode, listeners. Uh, there'll be lots of jargon Warning. And, and technical terminology. But I suspect, mm. um, based on the research we've done and the stories we've heard about about you two blokes, um, mm. this is going to be an accounting episode with a difference. I, I don't want to set the bar too high, just in oh. case you fail. Yeah, to. I feel I like mean, yeah. So we're not living up to the name right now. We're the two drunk accountants, but it's eleven thirty in the morning, so no, no, no beers excuse to him just yet. But it's no um, excuse, mate. We'll try. We like to say drunk in nature. You know, that's uh, that's the way we'll bring the vibe. And uh, according to your jokes already, we're already an interview with an accountant uh, with a difference because we're speaking to you, <laughs> <laughs> and you're smiling, which is making yeah. me nervous. Yeah. Usually, yeah. when I go to my accountant and he's smiling, I feel nervous. Oh, like, oh no, he's going to tell me bad news. Yeah. <laughs> he's trying to soften the blow. All right, so tell us a bit about um, your backstory, guys. Uh, obviously, you know, you've got an accounting firm. You, and our listeners won't necessarily know this, but you have a podcast, the King Podcast Mike, on at least one of your screens. Uh, so tell us a bit of your backstory, though. Like, how did you come to be famous enough to be on the Tradies in Business podcast? <laughs> I'm not sure we're deserving of the title yet, but um, <laughs> so yes, we are accountants. Uh, we own an accounting firm together called Cats Accountants on the Central Coast. Uh, we've both been there for, for you know, 15 years or, or just under. Um, Tim's parents actually started it, so I'll, I'll let him tell that bit of the story. But in, in terms of the, uh, the podcast... Well, we think we're funny. We spent a long time listening to podcasts. We, we weren't a big fan of a lot of the small business in general sort of podcasts out there when we first started um, doing it, which is back in like 2017, roughly. Mm -hmm. um, and so we thought, you know, we think we could do a better job. Why don't we start answering questions we get every day from, from small business owners and in all sorts of industries and try and be entertaining along the way. And yeah, five years later and 250 odd episodes where we're still plugging away. Nice. How do you with the entertaining bit? Did you succeed? Do you reckon? Well, that's for the audience to decide, but uh, I think so. Is that I where the alcohol came myself. in? Yeah. <laughs> that is where the alcohol came in to be yeah. with, definitely. <laughs> uh, Pretty rare we meet someone who had a podcast back before COVID times. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, we're like OGs where um, we feel like we invented podcasts. Um, no, it's not really, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no one listened before COVID. That was the difference. Oh, well, not to yours that. anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Tim, uh, your folks started the, the practice. Uh, yeah. I, I'm always fascinated to see that sort of intergenerational business where, and, and I think it's a bit, less common these days than it used to be in uh, previous generations where, you know, mm. the young'uns took over the business from the folks. Uh, was that a conscious choice or were you just forced into it? <laughs> yeah, no, I had no choice. I was, uh, I was born to be an accountant. My initials, I always make this joke. So my name is Timothy Shane Garth. And if you do the initials backwards, it spells GST. Oh, uh, I was born no. in 1990, so that was a good 10 or 11 years before the GST came out. So mom and dad must have known. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I don't know why. I always just wanted to be an accountant and I'm pretty sure mom and dad didn't, couldn't care less what I chose to do. Uh, but they were more than happy to bring me into the business. And I had a lot of school teachers and friends and people. When I told them I wanted to be an accountant when I was about 15 years old, they were like, Why? <laughs> <laughs> why, why would you do that? <laughs> um, and uh, I had no idea what an accountant even did. But for me, it was it was about um, staying local on the Central Coast and trying to pursue lifestyle, which is kind of ironic because business ownership or working in a family business and lifestyle may not go hand in hand, but um, or you've got to work really hard to make mm-hmm. that happen. So, so yeah, that, that's really why I got into the family business. I just saw it as an opportunity to keep living where I wanted to live and uh, to embark on a, on a career. So it's been good. It's worked out pretty well. I'm going to presume if you gents have been doing this for 15 odd years, that it's something that you do enjoy. What is it about it that you enjoy? Don't screw your nose up, Nicole. <laughs> yeah, what is it? Ugh. What's it that you Probably enjoy about it? I don't, I don't even get that out. Um, <laughs> just, just collecting tax on behalf of the government. That's yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> This just gives you a buzz. Gets, gets me out of bed in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I wake up in the morning. The first thing I first thing I think of is just oh, I love tax. How good is tax? Just <laughs> just want to do more and more compliance. tax. Tax and compliance just gets yeah. me going. <laughs> I, I think what what keeps me going in the industry is is one when I first stumbled into it. I, as Tim said, I didn't really know what it was. I I, I knew that you know tax was a part of it. I, I knew that supporting small businesses was a part of it, but I didn't know what that meant. And as time's gone on, it's sort of evolved and evolved. And, but really the, the main thing that stayed consistent the whole way is I just love trying to help small businesses. Um, it's something I feel passionate about, you know, Tim and I have similar goals in life. We, 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 we both stayed on the coast because we wanted to have the coast lifestyle and not go pursue a job at one of the big four, um, who are not in the good books at the moment anyway. So, um, so yeah, so we, we really have a passion to do that for ourselves and, and for our clients. And, and that's something that just keeps me, keeps me wanting to, to learn more about my clients and, and the people out there and, and help as many people as possible. And that's why something like the podcast was such a great fit because yeah, we can, we can get more and more information out to more and more businesses. And that makes me feel good. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. I mean, growing up in a family where my parents owned a business and I was an accounting business, but uh, I definitely saw firsthand the stresses and the, the difference, the different li- lifestyle that you live when you're a business owner. Um, so, and there were pros and cons to that, but I think that definitely is at the heart of my passion for trying to help our clients and business owners do better, whether that's win more time back or make more money or just have more peace of mind that mm. they're doing everything right by the government <laughs> when they lodge their tax. Um, those are all things that are pretty important to me. Oh, we both drew breath at the same time, Coxie. Uh, the battling guitars. I suspect we're both going down different rabbit holes though. Probably. Um, guys, <laughs> opinion time. Do accountants necessarily make good business owners? Do they naturally have business mm. skills because they're accountants? No, not always. <laughs> I think, <laughs> you know, um, it's, it's funny, you know, the, the mechanic's car often is, is an example that's, that's used in, in small business all the time. You know, the mechanic spends his day fixing other people's cars, but then his own car is a wreck. And accountants can often be the same. Um, mm. 
you know, you can get so caught up in doing the work, which is helping other people with their business, but it's hard to then uh, switch your brain to your own business. Like, like every business owner, um, you, you get stuck in the doing rather than the um, observing and, and, and fixing. Uh, and it's just also hard to be objective about your own business. Like everyone, you need someone mm. external to you to sort of point out, Hey, this is what's sort of happening, I think. And, and you might be so in the weeds, you don't realize it. Mm. So I think accountants are just like every other business owner. We, we've, we've learned a few things. We've got some skills. We see lots of things that happen, but it's hard to then reflect that onto yourself. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Tim, do you have an opinion? Do you, do you guys do. have to have the same opinion because you're in business together? Is it like Coxie and I, where we just naturally have to agree on everything? We no. just crack because we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Somehow we do generally. Uh, it, Dan, Dan was a bit of a maths nerd at school. I'm happy to just put that out there. He was uh, doing the whole extension maths. You everything. were happy to just put that out uh, there, Tim? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I did, Every opportunity I did, he gets. I did advanced yeah. maths, but, but Dan looks down his nose at me because he didn't even have to do that exam in year 12. He just got an instant band six. So, yeah, whoop, that's true. la di da um, But, yeah, it, like a maths equation, you can come to things in different directions. Uh, you can work it out different ways. And often I find that's what Dan and I do. We'll, mm. we'll come to the same answer, but we may be attacking it a slightly different way. Yeah, there'll be um, times we think we're disagreeing and then realize we're, we're both trying to say the same thing just from a different way. And we're like, oh, okay, no, the goal's the same. That's yeah, fine. <laughs> actually, we've been talking about the same thing. For 20 yeah. Years. But yeah, uh, I think definitely what Dan said is right. It does Being an accountant does not make you necessarily a good business owner. And um, uh, Dan and I often do talk about this a lot. It'd be awesome to start other businesses and, and use our skills and our experience that we've learned to do that. It, the, the hard part is just having the time to do it because we're so tied up in, uh, in the accounting business. So yeah, that's something we're, we're actually looking into and trying to pursue. I ask that question because I, I believe that there's a, fairly common misconception amongst small business owners that accountants know business. Mm. Uh, and I studied accounting and, and I actually interviewed for, it was the big six when I was a boy, but uh, <clears throat> a few changes have happened in the last <laughs> few years. Might be the big one or big two soon, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the big none would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, ran an accounting firm for a while and been in financial planning and stuff as well as some of the other roles that I floated through. But, I think people just naturally assume that their accountant knows how to run a business. And so they, they perhaps unconsciously end up deferring or abdicating a lot of the decision-making and the responsibility to their accountant. And then, mm. you know, for us as, as business coaches and mentors, we, we sort of hear these, these clients, these business owners say, Oh, my bloody accountant didn't tell me this and they didn't do that. And it's like, well, did you tell them what your plans were? Like, well, they're not mind readers. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're accountants, but they're not, they're not, you know, looking into a crystal ball going, now I know that you're going to grow your business and you're going to sack this guy and you're going to push into that marketplace. Like, it's yeah. just, it's not a, a default that every accountant knows how to run a business any yeah. more than every builder knows how to build a great house. So true, was like, I think this has been a big shift in the accounting industry in the last five years, um, maybe a bit longer than that. But the word advisory is really thrown around a lot these days. And, yeah. and that's accountants trying to push towards supporting business owners more. Um, and, and it's not taught at university. It's not taught when you become a junior accountant on, on how to run a business. You, you're taught how to file paperwork. Um, right. And a lot of accountants have particularly if their business has been around for five to 10 years, their, their whole goal was to get as many tax and compliance clients as they could get. So that unfortunately means they didn't have much time to work closely with their clients on their business either. Mm. So you, that's mm. where that traditional once a year uh, meeting with the accountant sort of came from, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so that is, it's a massive shift. It's a massive shift for accountants because they, they're needing to discover ways to help their clients more deeply and perhaps changing their relationships with their clients who now see them as the one, one meeting a year type person. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that's been a journey we've been on for a while trying to figure out um, how we can use our skills and our knowledge to help our clients. Mm -hmm. I, I think clients as well don't really, you know, if, if you hear that 
that saying that you said was that people, you know, oh, my accountant didn't tell me this, or I don't know how to do that. Well, if the only service you're engaging your accountant in is compliance and tax, well, they're focusing on all that information that's in the past. They're not mm. talking about your business plan. They're not talking about the future that they're looking backwards, not forwards. That's and so right. people don't really understand that that's not the same service. And, and that's not, you know, if you're catching someone in the middle of doing your tax return, it's, it's not, they're not in the right headspace and the right mindset to think about what's going on in the next 12 months for your business. It needs to be something separate. Um, and I think, yeah, that's a, a growing awareness in the community. I think that, Hey, mm. this is something, a separate meeting, a separate event, a separate planning day, a separate advisory sessions, whatever it is with my accountant to get that advice. It's not going to happen when I give them my tax work. That's right. Mm. So given there's such a spectrum, so we agree there's a spectrum of good accountants and not so good accountants. Mm. You guys obviously sit in a very different position to many that we speak to on a regular basis. I'd love to understand what makes you different to many of the others in the marketplace. Uh, I'd love to um, assume we're in the good end of the spectrum. (laughs) (laughs) You took the jokes well, so you bumped up. Yeah, that was the the first test. (laughs) Um, I think... Really, it's, it goes back to what Tim was just saying is that we've got a desire to figure out how we can take our skills and the things that we've learned by working through all these clients and and, and the knowledge that we've gained over, over a long period of time and apply that to our clients and, and help them and assist them and just ask questions. I, I had a, a, a meeting yesterday with a potential new client and um, I, I just asked them real simple questions like, Hey, what's, what's, what's your turnover at the moment? What's your sale? Like what's your profit at the moment? And they said they've had three accountants and not one has ever asked them just that simple question. Mm. Not once. And it wasn't a particularly interesting question. (laughs) I just wanted to know a bit about their business Went a lot deeper after that. But I, I think being curious and wanting to help is something that maybe differentiates us from potentially others. Yeah, you are a bit of a curious guy sometimes, Dan. Definitely. So I can be, fit, I can be a curiosity. There. It's true. Curious Dan. Yeah. You're curious Dan. Yeah, you, do, you know my nickname. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah. Sorry, Dan the nail. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, Dan hit the nail on the head there. And uh, I just think back to when we were focusing largely on tax work, we used to say we care. Mm. And that was kind of our point of difference. Like we really did care about the client. And I think that. Um, has shone through with where we've taken our services and it hasn't, it's not easy to step into those shoes of the advisor or, or the coach. Um, and I'm still a little bit uncomfortable using the word coach. <laughs> I don't know why, uh, but from an accountant's yeah. perspective, like from, from an accountant, it's a little bit of a dirty word, but it shouldn't be. Everyone, everyone does need a bit of a, a mentor or an advisor or a coach, uh, even us. And yeah, so I think just, at the heart of it, we we do care, and and that's where over five years the service is starting to really take shape, and um, and all of a sudden it's just so different to accounting work. It's mm-hmm. such a different conversation. Mm. It's a total conversation, isn't it? You you're looking mm. at business holistically instead of just from that planning point of view, which is still only a real small snapshot when we're talking about tax, tax planning, and compliance. Yeah. Um, I want to put something on the table because I think you've you've sneakily raised it there. And so let's just put it all out and air our dirty laundry. <laughs> Typically, business coaches and accountants don't get on. We're speaking different stories, yeah. having totally different conversations with our clients, and it can create a bit of mm, friction and even uncomfortableness for our clients because they'll go, of course, and have to explain why they're working mm. with a business coach to their accountant and vice versa. We might be saying, mm, I'm sorry, we need to have a bigger discussion about what your accountants just said. So we kind of fight or push push against each other quite frequently. So it's interesting to me, I've come sledging at you right from the get-go with some dreadful accountant <laughs> jokes. You've <laughs> clearly identified, and quite rightly so, the discomfort with the whole business coach or the coach label, something that Warwick mm-hmm. and I uh, probably agree with. I hate being called a business coach. I think th- there's this typical... I don't know, thought process that goes immediately to 10 X in your business. And I'm the biggest mm. maker in the room, right? Rather yep. than exactly what you're identifying in that care, the opportunity to care for a business owner. Mm. Can you unpack a little bit more that discomfort around stepping into more of that coach role for you guys? I think you got it right. And it's just that you just think of wankers. <laughs> <You just think laughs> of- <laughs> Why did you, what, did you just make eye contact with me, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's true. You do think of, of the, you know, the people who are promising the world. And, and that was part of the reason we wanted to start our podcast is because a lot of the business podcasts that were out there was like, here's how you turn your business into a billion dollar unicorn. And you can only work, you only have to work one day a week. And it was like, that's just not realistic for most business owners. It's not real. It's, that's not what people do. The truth is that, yes, we want more time. We want more money. One of these things, but they usually, usually take small little incremental steps. Um, and then you, you get your life or desired, um, life back. Mm. Um, but you just think of these business coaches in that word, it always is, is associated with the type of people who are just like, I'm going to turn your business from zero to a million um, mm. in a week. Yeah. And it's just not a holistic view. It's not the right approach. And, and I think that's why we sometimes resist calling ourselves coaches because mm. we don't want to be painted with the same brush. Guys, do you think there's a place for both? I, I, again, in 15 years or so as a coach, uh, I've made a lot of observations and Unfortunately, a lot of business owners feel like it's either they work with their accountant or they work with their business coach on those aspects of their business um, and that there's no room for both. And unfortunately, business coaches and accountants often feel the same way. It's obviously you need an accountant for compliance, but that's a different level of services. And, and as you guys mm. have already talked about, that whole business advisory services or whatever you want to call it, it's coaching. One day you'll be okay with it, Tim. Coxie is <laughs> gradually getting there. It's taken like many years. <laughs> but, <laughs> but do you think there's a place for both with a business? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you go, Tim. For sure. Yeah, I think so. Um, they're going to, you know, if you looked at two coaches, they're going to have a different approach, mm. right? So you could have a coach who's going to more focus on leadership. And then you could have a coach who's going to more focus on systems and, and structures in your business. Mm. Your accountant is going to see things through a different lens to the way your coach is going to see things. And um, it depends how much time and energy you have to put into the process because that's, mm. that's a large part of it. Like your coach isn't going to be able to do the heavy lifting for you. Mm. Um, but if you are investing in yourself and you're looking for improvement, I think definitely um, you could definitely work with both. And I think we've probably do have a few business owners that, that uh, work with you guys and, and work with us potentially as well, um, I'm hearing. And, uh, and so they must, they must see some value in the different conversations and the different perspectives we bring. And it, it must line up <laughs> somewhere along the way there too. Um, and I think from my perspective, uh, as an accountant, you can find by doing the advisory or the coaching style service, you, you can mix in a little bit of tax and accounting knowledge, which is really nice to bring. So you might see an opportunity that other accountants who aren't as closely involved in the conversation or in the business would see to save some tax or to restructure or to do things a little bit differently so that they can get ahead a bit quicker. So yeah, I think from the accountant's perspective, they can bring in that numbers focus and the, the nerd focus and, <laughs> and the tax and entity structuring uh, to layer on top of the planning and the accountability. And then from the coach's perspective, um, you've got a a whole different hat and a whole different history of experience that, that you can bring to the table. So, um, yeah, I think it just comes down to how much time does the business owner have to, <laughs> to invest in, in, and work on their business. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, I think, I think you're absolutely right. I think there's definitely a space as a, a business coach I was speaking to recently and I'm, we were sort of comparing notes like, all right, well, what do you do with your clients and, and what do we do when we, when we say advisory, mm. and there's, there's, big holes in what they do that we could fill with what we do. And there's big holes in what we do that they could fill with what they do. They like, so like leadership or focusing on a particular sales aspect, or there might be an industry specific thing or, or whatever it is, there's, there's different things that everyone brings to the table. And mm -hmm. I, I think if you're just trying to figure out or out where are my pain points and who can help, I think mm -hmm. that's, that's the main thing. Mm -hmm. So totally. like lawyers, I guess, because there's yeah. so many, there's so many streams of law, right. And you don't want to go see, um, a conveyancer for a commercial, um, le like a commercial legal issue that you're yeah. having. You're just not going to get the right advice, but there is a place for both to help you at different times. So, yeah. We really could be friends. 
<laughs> in, yeah, in, <laughs> we could yeah. be friends, baby. Could I mean, it, there's a few. There's a lot of water to go under the bridge yet. Yeah, but. yeah. I'd, I'd have to stop dissing you guys at yeah. every opportunity. We're open but, to to you know building that bridge, but there's a long way to go. We're calling the military. We get a floating yeah. bridge put in to start with. <laughs> okay, so uh, I guess there's a lot of misconceptions. We've, we've probably, you know, both of our industries get tarred with um brushes and people have all these stereotypes and very uncomplimentary things that are said and thought about accountants and i just really? think i didn't know I, didn't, yeah. I, didn't well, think so. I, I think it's awesome that you wear glasses tim because that really just fits the, the whole accountant stereotype <laughs> you're wearing glasses too was yeah but i'm a business coach so i'm allowed to i'm, I'm the only one here not wearing glasses that is true dan yeah. and you should be dan you're not wearing your glasses today what are you doing contacts perfect vision <laughs> He can't see a damn thing at the moment, but there is no way he was wearing glasses for this interview. Uh, and business coaches, you know, we cop the same stuff. There's there's that almost a level of mistrust because of all that stereotyping and, and those very persistent um, ideas about who we are. Uh, you guys, obviously, you have your own firm. You've got you know, loyal clients. How? What sort of things have you done to either break that down or perhaps to re-educate people about what, what they could get from their account and what the relationship could be like. Mm. Yeah. I think so to start with breaking the stereotypes down um, it's, it's funny when, whenever I go to, you know, there's a, a networking event or something and I, I introduce myself, I say, Oh, you know, I'm Dan. And they say, what do you do? And you say, I'm an accountant. And, mm. and normally you get one or two responses um, or three, actually one is I already have an accountant. <laughs> work that out. I have an accountant. And you're like, like I'm married. To you. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, they've got a. They're yeah. just like pointing to their ring, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're a female. I'm a male. I'm married. Sorry. Oh, Come sorry. This conversation. Already got exactly. one of those. <laughs> uh, or, or, or you get their eyes glaze over because they just immediately lose interest in you as a person. Um, or I have a lot of people say to me, and I think Tim gets the same. You don't look like an accountant. Yeah. <laughs> What an icebreaker, like, hey? That's a great way to start a conversation. I've had that so many times. I say, oh, I'm an accountant. Oh, you don't look like an accountant. I was, so when I come back now, I was like, what do I look like? And, you know, people tell me a graphic designer once, and an architect. Male model. Yeah, male model. <laughs> uh, I get that a lot, actually. Well, thanks for bringing that up. Um, and and math, math guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mathlete. But uh, I think it's just... It's important to try and be yourself and represent yourself is, is where I'm getting to here um, in everything that you do. And so just because you are an accountant doesn't mean you need to act like the stereotypical accountant. You can you can be yourself and be a professional. You can be yourself and good, be uh, give good advice. And, and the consequence of that, I think, is that you should start attracting people who are like you to work mm. with, which means you're going to be happier with your client base. Now, this isn't always the case. <laughs> Um, and, and as you become more of yourself, you might even find that you alienate some people who, who are used to working with a, you know, strictly what they perceive to be an accountant. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think the first thing is, is you should, shouldn't try to be something. You should just be yourself. And then, and then the rest should follow to help try and break down that, that barrier. But then it's just having conversations with your clients mm -hmm. in terms of letting them know what services you do. Um, asking questions about the business. What are they doing? What's their plans? What are they trying to achieve? What are their pain points? And, and just being curious, as we're saying, you know, curious, Dan. Um, I, I think you're going you're gonna to break down the barriers naturally because people want to talk about themselves and their business. It's, it's a great uh, example for our listeners because a lot of trade business owners struggle with stereotyping and mm. we, you know, they have these very persistent ideas amongst consumers, especially that tradies are ripping people off and they don't clean up after themselves and they're always late and they don't return your phone calls and all these sorts of things that people assume about, Oh, what do you do? I'm a builder. Oh, a builder. You know, like, well, you're making mm. tons of money cause you're ripping everybody off driving around your fancy car and you don't pay your subbies. And <clears throat> you know, there's just all this crap out there. And unfortunately, people play into those stereotypes unwittingly by mm. trying to construct this fake identity that is the opposite of that instead of just, as you say, Dan, being themselves and mm. showing people that they care. And often that's enough just to actually set themselves apart. So I love that, uh, you know, that transferable advice, mate. Yeah, well, we, and we, we say this, but everyone fails at this from time to time. We, we've, <laughs> we sometimes struggle with it. We sometimes... 
um, don't always, um, you know, um, have that translated easily. Um, but as long as you can do it most of the time and, mm. and try and get it out there and be yourself and, and have your goals or your values, um, you know, your guide rails in your business and how you want to behave and, and, and who that is as part of you, your reason for being there, then it should all just transfer and flow through. Mm. Okay, I'm feeling some levels of concern around your boundaries and the fact that you're the two drunk accountants. <laughs> are you drunk? What are you, you doing <laughs> accounting? Or? I don't like to see the here. I'd really like to put clients on the hook for a minute um, because given that we're all in a professional space, just like our trading clients, their clients sometimes aren't the right ones. They need to do some work beforehand to figure out whether they're working with the right kind of people and eliminate those who aren't. Likewise, the people that we all work with sometimes aren't the right fit for what we do or how we do it. Um, sometimes it's really easy to see that. you can They're red flags immediately and other times they're very good at hiding those red flags and they come out a little while later. I'd mm. love to understand your process around identifying the clients that will work best with the way you both work. Yeah. Um, we, <laughs> yeah. We, we go to a few accounting conferences and um, it's quite funny hearing about the old school way accountants used to approach taking on new clients if they had a wallet and a and a pulse that yes. they were a good client <laughs> and that the uh, the pulse was optional yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that is a, still a joke that is told amongst progressive accountants because it is a new thing we are all trying to only work with clients that are going to bring value to our business mm. as well mm. and it's so true because bringing on a client is actually a really time consuming, costly endeavor. The, mm. the meetings, the gaining of trust, um, and then figuring out how each other works. It's, it's really time consuming. And then if, if they don't stay a client for very long, you've just, you feel like you've wasted a lot of time. So we've definitely focused um, recently and, you know, have made plenty of mistakes as well, but we've tried to work on some systems to try and weed out uh, people who don't fit our value and our purpose. So that involved us being really clear on why we're in business, who we want to work with. Yeah. And, uh, and then also building in systems with our team so that they can help with that process. So it's not just a straight to, to Dan and I, uh, the partners in the firm, there is a couple of gateways they need to get through. Um, and if they're getting through to that point, you know, it's definitely someone who's going to likely be um, worth sitting down with for a chat and talking about uh, how we can help them. Uh, so, yeah, and that's even looked like a points system. So <laughs> the clients may not, or prospective new clients may not know it, but we may be asking them questions and then assigning positives or negatives based on yeah. their responses. Like, do you have many overdue tax returns? <laughs> or, uh, or are they only asking about tax? Is that the only thing they're asking about? Because yeah. Yeah. we want people with a growth mindset. We, yes, definitely. Don't pay more tax than you should. But if that's your only focus, then I don't know if we're the accountant for you because we want to talk to you about more things than just mm. that. Uh, mm. So there's just some examples of how we weed out people who may not be the ideal. Have you found that the podcast has assisted with that early weed out because you're talking frequently to everybody. They're listening, right? They're getting a feel for you well before they then make that first contact. Are you finding that, A, that's helping to identify the right kind of clients for you or they're feeling attracted to you in that early phase because they've heard your podcast or are you using it as a tool as part of that screening? Go and take a listen, figure out who we are. How does that work for you? Mm. Yeah. Question. Yeah, we we haven't proactively sent people to the podcast uh, mm. as like a as a tool to be like, hey, Go listen before you come in for your first meeting, um, which is a good idea. I should write that down. Um, <laughs> you can have that for free as well. Yeah, but, but we do tell people about the podcast, and 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 there has been, you know, new leads, new clients coming through who who were listeners to the podcast first. Mm -hmm. And I do find that the conversations I'm having with those new leads are a lot better than the conversations I'm having with just a cold lead who's just found us some other way, yep. mm -hmm. um, because they do know who I am. Sometimes it's unnerving they know who I am and because <laughs> you forget how much you talk nonsense on the podcast about yeah. like, hey, let's talk about uh, my my trip on uh, Bumble this week, which is what we talked about last <laughs> week. It's on, on Bumble podcast. now. <laughs> yeah. 
And, and so they come in and like, even in a meeting yesterday, it wasn't a new client, but uh, uh, with someone and he was asking me if I'm still doing my meditation and grounding. And I'm like, oh, what? That's like, oh, yeah, of, course, of course. That's right. Yeah. That was like three months ago. Yeah. In summer when it was nice and warm. And- <laughs> yeah, when I wasn't just staying in bed to stay warm. Um, so yeah, it, it, it is a really good tool for that. I think it, it does help people realize who we are and what we're about. And, and those conversations have been better. They haven't always been the ideal client in terms of size and the services that they need, but but the conversations have been better. Have you found the same, Tim? Yeah, I think it breaks down those stereotypes that Woz was mentioning before. And um, yeah, it is it is really interesting because going back to those networking events, first of all, you say, I'm an accountant and their eyes glaze over or they say, you don't look like one. And then, uh, and then you go, well, but something of interest to you might be that I've got a podcast called The Two Drunk Accountants. And then either, like I find half of them have either heard of it or um, or are like, what? That's totally different. Tell me about that. So it just, I guess, yeah, it breaks down barriers mm-hmm. and uh, shows people that we are who we are. We're not hiding anything. We're just mm-hmm. being ourselves. And that's not why we really started it, but it's been a nice unintended consequence mm-hmm. of having the podcast. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's interesting. And I think even funnily enough, other accountants send their clients to listen to the podcast as well. And it could be just that whole thing of, see, look, accountants aren't just boring. <laughs> you know, we don't just do tax. <laughs> we're, we, you know, we're all a little bit like this in our own way. So yeah, it's quite interesting. The best compliment we had was a guy wrote into us and told us that he became an accountant because of us. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. That was a compliment. Like- yeah, well, we, we said, we like, you know, sent back like, st- don't do it. <laughs> it was too late. Yeah. It's not that good. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty amazing. I don't think anybody's written cool. into us and said we became a tradie because of us or even a business owner because of us. Definitely. No one's become a business coach because of us. No. <laughs> You're doing too good of a job. That's why. <laughs> I just I couldn't did. compete. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, nice work. <laughs> Um, given that you guys uh, work a little differently with your clients and we may hear from a few people that they're not totally satisfied with their relationship with their accountant and what they get from them. You know, there's this mismatch in terms of the value proposition and what people, people's expectations and reality. You know, it's this whole, this whole uh, meme thing uh, of, of the modern era. Um, you guys must have some tips or some ways that other than leaving their existing accountant and coming and using you guys, are there ways that tradie business owners could actually get more, not just more, but perhaps better uh, advice and services from their existing accountant? No, yeah, okay, I think, cool. I think, uh, yeah, uh, I think, yeah, I was only for Dan to respond there, but <laughs> I've got <laughs> some ideas on say. this. So, uh, if you're thinking about, you know, improving the relationship with your accountant, um, it definitely involves catching up with them a bit more regularly, which is going to be tricky because they are busy. It costs money <laughs> though, Tim. It costs money. They charge money. by the hour, you know. I know, I know. So you really do need to be clear on what you want from your accountant. And there's been a lot of research into this. And um, I, I think for the last decade, it's been a pretty similar answer. Most clients of accountants know that they want more from their accountant. But when you ask them what it is, they don't know no. what it is they want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they just want more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so maybe if you can first off have a think about what that might be for you and your business, uh, what advice or help and support that may be. Um, but if your accountant isn't coming to you with some progressive ideas about how you can work together more closely or... Um, we've got this new service or this new way we can help you, then yeah, you, you might want to consider asking them about that or sussing out other options. Mm. And it's weird. People treat their accountant sort of like their doctor. Yes. You really don't change until something goes terribly wrong. That's right. It's misdiagnosed or well, something goes wrong. And so, by then it could be it could be too late depending on what's happening in your business. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, it's people do feel a great sense of loyalty to their accountant because their accountant knows everything about them. 
Mm. So, uh, so yeah, I think it's just, you've got to have that conversation with your accountant if you're feeling that way and give them an opportunity to either step up. And if they don't have anything to offer you other than a meeting and a price tag, then, um, then yeah, maybe you need to look into other options. Yeah. I, I think that's exactly what Tim said, speak to your accountant, but know the value of what you're trying to get. Like, you know, you're saying you're not sure what you want, but you want help. Well, help does cost money sometimes, but the return you should get from that investment, you know, will be greater than the cost of it. So just understand that, yes, if, if you're sitting there saying, I need help, my business isn't going the way, I'm stressed, I've got no money, I've got no time. Um, and then you go to your accountant or your accountant has noticed it and comes to you and says, hey, I think we can help. Let's do a planning session. And, and you know, I, I really think this could help you in these areas. Oh, by the way, this costs this much. And then you balk at that price. Well, nothing is going to get better. Mm. Right. It, there is a price. Don't be afraid to invest money into your business and to get help because that's the only way you go forward. So don't complain if you're also not willing to pay for it. Yeah, and I think that's where the coaches mm. have been a bit ahead of the curve in terms of like versus accountants. Mm. Coaches are very good at, and this, this may just be the appearance and again, that stereotype, but they're very good at communicating their value and mm. positioning their service and their, their structure of the way they work. And uh, for accountants, that's something that they probably haven't really spent a lot of time working on potentially in the past. Um, so, yeah, and, and from an accountant's perspective, just, just speaking from the accountant's uh, shoes, they may not have that much confidence in the value they do have to offer. They may just be telling you the price and thinking, I don't know if it's really worth it for you mm -hmm. to come in and pay me 400 bucks for that hour. But um but yeah, it's, it's a whole journey for the accounting industry and for the accountants and for the business owners. So if you like your accountant, give it a shot, have a chat with them and see how you might be able to work more closely with them on your business. Love it. Mm. Coxie's thinking of the next accountant joke. So I'm going to hit you guys with, <laughs> with, with another question. Um, this will be interesting. I'm, I'm keen to, to hear your response to this one. If you had a thousand trade business owners in a room, other than getting very excited about how many clients you're going to sign up. What's... No, no, I'd be terrified by that many. <laughs> uh, what's one piece of advice you would like to leave with those thousand trade business owners? Mm. That's great. Many, yeah. Many things just came to my head. <laughs> so Turn many up things. on time, return phone calls, call up after yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Like, and this is, this is, this is the funny thing. I went straight to, numbers yeah, i'm just a data guy and so and i'm the I, think, I don't know about you guys but um i'd like to hear from your perspective your answer to this too but um i i think timesheets and margins <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where my head went straight away so i want to know more data on the profits you're making mm -hmm. on the work you're doing because most people are just sending out quotes doing the job mm. hoping they made a profit that's what i'm seeing Mm. Mm. You might uh, have a business coach, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? Yeah. Whereas I, I went straight to cash flow was the first yeah. thing that popped in my head was you're not being paid quick enough. You're not invoicing quick enough. You're spending too much time on a job, um, whatever it happens to be. But most traders are saying, I've got no money. Mm. Cash. Mm. So cash flow was the first thing I thought of. Mm. Can you give us some tips so I can be a better coach and tell me how to fix their cash flow, mate? <laughs> <laughs> give you lots of tips. <laughs> six so minute, many six minute blocks of time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah we'll, we'll start the clock now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, and, and they are, um, I think there are issues that even a lot of coaches, you know, we've, we've talked a bit about the, perhaps some of the differences between accountants and coaches, and there's more similarities than there are differences, to be honest, uh, between the four of us, <clears throat> yeah, as much as it pains me to admit that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think a lot of people go looking for the fancy solutions to their, mm -hmm. their problems. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the, the most powerful solutions are often really quite boring and yes. and dry and it's like you know if you fix those things everything else is way more fun but you've got so to do true. the boring stuff to actually get to the good stuff it's it's kind of like you know what we were taught as kids if you eat your veggies then you get the cool stuff and you get to have dessert <laughs> but if you don't do the boring stuff if you don't get the good bits 
it's like so, that. It's so true. So true. And like, the, and you can tell the first two things Tim and I came up with were, uh, are you making a profit on your job? <laughs> mm. And are you being paid in time? <laughs> they're not hard. They're like, they're not <laughs> on the mental aspect of running a business. Yeah. yeah. You would but, think. Uh, a lot of people get them wrong. Yeah. yeah. So many. And it's because you're busy. You're trying to do the right thing by your, your customers. You're trying to send quotes out and win work and do mm. marketing. But mm. yeah, the fundamental boring things are the things that pay the bills and put food on your table, aren't they? Mm. So is that where you, was Coxie? Is that where you would go straight away if you had a thousand traders in a room and you had one bit of advice? Interested to know what you think. No. no. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be typical business coaches and get really fancy. Yeah, what, what, what have you gone? Do you know what I find is um, they don't know what they need to know is first and foremost, mm. which means that when we tell them that I don't disagree with what you're saying at all and we have worked really hard on some of this messaging, they don't want to hear that messaging as a first instance. Mm. hear about the things they think they need to know about marketing, about you know the fun stuff in business, if you like. In an actual fact, what I would say is you don't have to do it on your own. Mm. I think specifically for our market, when we think about them, tradies are very insular. They're not talking to other tradies. Like they don't go to networking events and talk to the other Sparky in the room mm. about what their business is doing and what it looks like and, oh, I'm having a hard time here because they're stuck, many of them in that fear mindset. Oh, if I say too much, they might take my ideas. Yep. And so I think the key for many of them is just not knowing that they are not alone. They feel like they're alone. So firstly, you're not alone. There are many, many other business owners that feel exactly the same as you and you don't have to do it alone. There is help out there, but I just don't think that they understand in the first instance that there is actually help available. So yeah, well, so. Already proving Tim's point from earlier is that uh, you guys are better at selling yourselves. Than- <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I was, that really made me think back to when, you know, we started on the advisory journey and when we wanted to help our clients more, we started building dashboards mm. and becoming data scientists, basically. Mm-hmm. We were like mining mm. their accounting figures and giving them these beautiful dashboards and charts and graphs. They and can... their eyes would just glaze over. Yep. <laughs> You're like, yeah, look, this is the percentage this month. And it just wouldn't change. No. And eventually they're like, I don't have time for these meetings anymore. Uh, that's when we realized we, we needed a bit more of the the in-between stuff, the, mm. the, the soft stuff that, but it, it's so important. It's so important. Um, yep. Yeah. So I think you've hit the nail on the head there. Thanks. And I'm just going to agree with Coxie because that's gotten me this far in our uh, <laughs> business relationship and I don't see Smart any man. reason to change a winning formula. <laughs> <laughs> now I um, probably a little bit different. Uh I mean, once once all thousand people had signed up to my fifty thousand dollar coaching program and got the free mouse mat at the back of the room, um, then I would actually start to talk to them. I, I would challenge them on their thinking and how they solve their problems. Uh, and what I see, and I saw this in my old man and and all of my family who are all tradies, is they solve their problems like employees, not like business owners. Mm. And so, whatever problem they have. Are they using employee thinking and even self-employed, the, the word employee is still in there. <clears throat> you know, we're mm. just employed by ourself. Yep. Are they solving their problems with employee thinking or business owner thinking? Mm. And that usually leads people to go, well, what's business owner thinking? It's like, well, how did you solve your last cash flow problem? Oh, well, I went and worked more. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. The, like the only tool employees have is to work more hours. If you want, if, when, when we were all employees and we wanted more money for a holiday, mm. what did we do? We either worked more hours or got a second job. Mm. I did it. You know, I had two jobs when I was in my twenties. I was working as a as a commercial accountant, and I was filling shelves at night times to pay my car off quicker. Mm. Like that's the only tool I had. I had no other way to make more money. But business owners solve problems in different ways. Yeah. They look at all the other stuff. You know, they they look at the things you you two guys talked about. You know, am I making enough profit on my jobs? What's my cash flow doing? Am I collecting my money fast enough? Mm-hmm. You know, where can I go and learn some more stuff about those things? Which which plays into what Coxie's talking about of, well, I can't do all this on my own. I can only mm. work 24 hours a day and beyond yeah. that, that's it. You know? Yeah, that's so, so true. Yeah, it's sort of that technician mindset mm-hmm. where, yeah, and it's fair enough. It's the same with, we were talking about accountants, how they're not traditionally very good at 
maybe running a business or, or coaching people on how to run a business because they were taught how to be an accountant. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> and it's the right. same if you're a tradie, you know, you're taught if you're a plumber, you're taught how to do plumbing. Or if you're a builder, you're taught how to build. This is why I don't know how to use a hammer or a drill because I was never taught these things in accounting school. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, you need to sharpen sharpen the axe a little bit and, and get those skills in place so that you can think like a business owner. I, I love that. Yeah. 100%. Funny, funny story. I was sitting in my office just over there earlier doing some work and there's some tradies doing something at the house next door and they're out the back working on something. And the two of them are having a conversation and one of them is giving the other one tax advice. <laughs> and it was about, it was all around like how to be a sole trader and like super and all, all these things. And I was just like, I was so tempted just to walk outside and just like, just hold on. Most of what you said was wrong. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Um, Love it, but it, that, yeah, I think they don't know, as you said, they're, they're thinking from a technician point of view, as Tim said. So I think uh, you've hit, you know, like all of us have done. Ironically, we've been hitting a lot of nails on the head. Today. Yeah, no pun intended there. And not yeah. making any puns. No. <laughs> all right, fellas. Um, other than the fact that everybody should sign up to our very expensive coaching program first, <laughs> uh, and then go and check you guys out. If yeah. if someone's listened to this and wants to check out your podcast, especially. Uh, what's the best place to find you? Anywhere you find podcasts, Two Drunk Accountants is uh, is on all the apps, um, like me, and you can. <laughs> <laughs> and you can the apps. <laughs> yeah, you can you can go find us uh, on all the social medias, Two Drunk Accountants. You can send us an email if you want something specific, Two Drunk Accountants gmail dot com. If you've, I've I've gone straight into like end the podcast mode. Um, <laughs> or, or, or send our us website. a message we'll send to, you a shirt <laughs> yeah actually that is where we are giving some giveaways at the moment so if you are listening there is giveaways nice we got nice. Bribe, bribe people with merch it always yeah. works yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well fellas it's been a great chat uh not at all as bad as i feared talking to two accountants no i'm only kidding uh, <laughs> we know you guys are a bit different and it's it's always fantastic to I guess not educate our listeners, but uh, perhaps pique their interest and raise their awareness about how things could be. And and you know, obviously, I'm going to pump up my business partner and co-host tires here around. It doesn't have to be the way that it is, and mm -hmm. people don't have to do it on their own. And that's that's a message that we want to get out to you listening to this episode. Is uh, you know, business doesn't have to be overwhelming and confusing, and your numbers certainly don't have to be that way. Um, you don't even need to understand tax and compliance. I mean, that's what accountants take off your plate so that you can be talking to them or to your coaches or to both about actually changing what you're doing currently. So um, yeah. go have a listen to, to these two fellas. Um, they seem like they have a personality, at least between them. Uh, and... We add up to one. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't finish without a sledge. Yeah. Uh, and um and we would like to thank you for listening to this episode. Thanks guys. <laughs>